All right, here we are rigging video update number one for the 2023 Bass Cat Puma STS. There she is right there, folks. She looks beautiful. I'm going to show you where we are now as far as uh, finishing out rigging the boat. Uh, I think if you saw the video that I put out before about receiving the boat and all the things that I had to do to it, this is going to be update number one. I'll do an update once I'm finished with everything, but I kind of wanted to give you the like the halftime show, so to speak, and give you a couple tips that I remembered and that I learned while I was rigging mine. But as you can see, we're going to start back here at the back. I've been doing some different stuff. I've had the boat out one time. I put my Russell Marine Products motor toter on there. That thing is super slick, super strong. Love that guy. And we're going to just go ahead and jump up in here into the back. And I'm going to show you what I've done. Now, there was there were no batteries in here before. Now I have rigged two batteries. This is all I am going to run. This is the Lithium Pros 215 amp hour 12 volt battery. The, the starting battery. It's where everything is hooked up there. Uh, but then and then I have the 136 volt here. And that is all I'm gonna run there. I'll show I'll explain why I've got them rigged where I have. And then here's the power pole charge that manages all of the power between these two massive batteries. That is that is what that is about. And I have it rigged over here on this left side on that little step portion. I have all the wires going up up under here, and then I have my my plug-in. I have it long enough to where I can put it out the back. Even if I have my cover on, I can make it long enough to where it'll stick out of the cover. That's why I did it like yeah, like that. Uh, but here, I'm gonna just show you on the Bass Cats. Take off this little cover here, and you can see these are all the connections. Very neat, very snug. This is the master power, and this is pushed in so it's turned off. I can just turn, push that button and turn it on. Everything is rigged, this is power pole. Um, no, excuse me, I believe this is power pole charge right there. Uh, I think that's regular power pole. But anyway, either way, got everything hooked up to the battery nice and neat. And I like having the 12 volt on this side. It, that's where everything is kind of pre-rigged, so it's way, way easier to just manually hook it up over there. If it was easier, easy enough, I probably would have put both batteries over there and then just had all of this but i just i like to kind of keep with what the boat already has i've got space on either side over here that i can work i can work around if i push this battery all the way to the back i can't get to that that bus bar in the back that has all the different power wires i can't get to that very easy if i wanted to uh tighten up my bolts that are going to be holding my jack plate on if the battery was all the way back there it would be difficult to get to those two since i've moved it forward a little bit those are easier to get to and if i'm going to be running any wires back up in here very easy to get to uh same thing if i pushed it all the way forward now i cannot get to these pumps very easily through this side these pumps way up at the front so and, and i can't get to all of this back up in here so I, that's why i put it right in the middle and then this is the power power pole power uh, for the actual power poles and then on this one i moved it all the way forward because that's where i wanted the weight distribution in the boat i didn't want to move it all the way back there's a couple relays back there for the power poles if those should happen to go bad or something that it just makes it so much easier to get to plus the same deal with the bolts on the back and if somebody ever wanted to add a second battery they don't have to move this one i use the th marine battery trays there uh, on either side and they're very very light man they, they hold these batteries down very very solid and i have another one if i want to put a second 36 volt battery i could do that if i should so want to i just have my little basket throw cushion definitely a piece of uh, safety equipment that you have to have i usually put the throw cushion right there in the boat uh, but then going forward as you can see still kind of got a lot of stuff going on here in the boat uh, one of the things that i learned let's see if it'll i gotta turn the power back on Jeez. but 
you can see the for the power just flick that switch lights come back on I'm gonna show you show you one thing that I learned uh, and so when I when I went out on the water I've tested this one time I got the batteries rigged up and I had these two console graphs ready to go and I wanted to make sure that my motor back there the old mercury was good to go so I put that uh, I went and went to the lake had a nice day it was in the 40s I said shoot I'm gonna go I'm gonna go break this bad boy in while I was out there I'm testing everything I'm testing all the live well pumps I'm testing the bilge pumps or as I've heard some people call it the village pump I love that it's like a village but a village anyway uh, the the village pump I tested those everything was everything was good so now I wanted to test all my transducers the Humminbird transducer, the 2D, good. Uh, it's typical Humminbird 2D, which is the three through hull. Uh, so I can see while I'm running. The Humminbird uh, side image, is what it's called, looked good, but it wasn't great. And I might even turn this on, kind of show you what, what adjustments I made there so you can dial in yours because the hummingbird the mega the mega side imaging it's pretty good when you when you first get it but it's not great you can dial in the settings dial in that bad boy lawrence is not as much lawrence is not like that the lawrence if you if you don't have it dialed in from the giddy it is uh that is the way it is man that is the way it is uh, I've seen transducers do better than others. The one I have on here, it is it is primo. It is very good. But let me show you this, what I'm talking about. I got in here and my 2D sonar was reading. I'll give you a different view. I set some of these windows up uh, yesterday. Uh, I'll just show you this one. This is one I like to use a lot. And I have the, have the you know, the, the side down here. I have the the 2d up here and i have the map here well i was looking at the 2d and i couldn't see the bottom when i was running so i thought okay there's a problem i thought that it, my depth it wasn't reading and then i realized no maybe it's the maybe it's just reading off the side image which it was but i couldn't figure out why it was not registering why i was not seeing the 2d transducer in the bottom of the boat well once i got in here and started setting up my system i went over here to settings would you saw that and go to the little system and i go down here to sonar you want to make sure these internal sonar channels are turned on so i had i had this right here that's what i had i had internal sonar channel two was off so when i came here i was seeing the bottom when i was running but I went over here and I was like, well, how can I choose the other channel? I couldn't figure it out because I, sometimes I'm a little slow. And, and this is, folks, I've done this before. Same problem. I've had it before. So I couldn't figure out what was going on. But if you, if you open that up and you see frequency and you hit frequency right there, well, we're inside. We hit frequency and you see these high speed chirps, then that means you're on the, you're on the down image or the side image transducer you're not on the the regular through hole that's what that means so if you see that that's what that means so i went here i hit the little gear wheel i hit the sonar i turned on this channel i had a remember that and now you can see down here it says source this unit channel one i say no i went to channel two so i went to channel two and then you can see frequency now you don't have all these other options. You don't have the low. You just have the high speed. So you can see how it actually changed. It went from one. This is the one transducer. went to the other transducer. Even though we're in the garage, you can see that's reading a different transducer. So uh, that's a little tip there. If you hook up your Lowrance brand new and you're not seeing the transducer that you thought you were going to see. Uh, real quick on the, on the Humminbird, I mentioned before that... I messed with my settings. Well, first of all, before I go to that, you want to go in here to your setup and go down and, and select custom. 
that's going to give you a whole lot more whole, whole lot more options as you're going through all of your settings if you go over here to user mode and you do whoop, angler see how all your set a lot of your settings went away i don't know what angler they're talking about but this angler is not apparently adept in using their depth finder i want to i want all the options bro give them to me so you can see there's more options there so went went through those and we're going over here to sonar and then we're going to we're going to exit out of that we're going to go to menu and then sensitivity it was on it was on zero and contrast was on zero as well and what I did is I messed with it, and you want the sensitivity and the contrast to be apart, you know, six to, you know, eight to ten digits. So I ran the sensitivity down to minus six, contrast up to two, sharpness was off, side image range, just for testing, I was at 100. Usually I run it at 120 on the Humminbird, uh, so you want both. And th that thing, I mean, it got crystal clear i mean clear buddy it got it got dialed in so that can give you a good jump start if you're setting up your hummingbird that's a big deal uh that's a big deal to me and if you want a really clear side image that's the way you do it and, and then i set up all my menus i've done videos before on how to set up your lorances your console unit and your bow unit I set these three menus up. These are the three that I use mostly. Uh, you can see, you know, you, I, I like the down, I like the side. And then also this little menu over here, after about five or six seconds, it'll it'll go away. Uh, that is a little user interface I've showed you guys before on how that works. See, it goes away so you can maximize your entire screen. And if you do want to see that menu, you just tap that right there. But that's really easy to, easy to change. You just tap, 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 tap that. And then you're gonna go up here to advanced user interface and then auto hide menu on because it comes off you want to turn that on that hides that menu to utilize your entire screen while you're not pushing buttons and so forth uh, so that's all you got to do there turn that bad boy on and and that's under your system and down here under advanced that's where that was just to show you again but we're gonna turn it off with the power button, then power it off. I like to manually power them off because they are little computers in there. And up here, you'll see we've got the humming. I've got my, I've got two balls out, four inch balls out uh, mounts for the front. Kind of show you how that's gonna, gonna play out. But inside of here, I wanted to show you something real quick. Inside of this rod locker, I, I did this last couple years. This is where I like to put my my Garmin black box. You can see all my wires running up. Very easy to to run wires and stuff in this in this boat. I put that right there because I like it in the rod locker. I don't want to hard mount it anywhere. I just the way I've worked with it for a while, it works great. Had no problems. I tested this uh, once I hook, finished hooking it up yesterday. No problems. Like I said, this is the Garmin. We'll show you guys that later on in another video, but I'm still wrapping everything up. That's where the two balls out mount are gonna be mounted. And all my units look very seamless right through here. Very nice, very nice. I'm gonna try the Garmin LVS34 on the shaft this year. I had it on the barrel last year, and that is a grass hanging mother. It will hang any grass that you get remotely close to. So I'm going to move it up here and try it, especially since we're starting at Okeechobee. And then the 360 will go here. I tested that yesterday. These are the two connections for the 360. That worked fine. I really like this. This is the Fortrex mount that you have to use on the Ghost. I had one last year. I did not, a, a different company, and it was really nice. And I just don't have it there because, uh, honestly, not sure how long I'm going to have this trailer motor on here. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens, but I'm rigging this bad boy to get it ready to go right now. Uh, I got my foot pedal is going to go back here. Basscat has this convenient little hole to where you can get to all of your electrical deals. But this is how they, this is how Basscat does it. People say, "Oh, do you run the uh, C Clear harnesses and stuff like that?" I say, "No, I don't." Bat C Clear is a, an amazing 
very good. There's a couple other brands, but Trent over there at Sea Clear, he really knows what he's doing. And if you if you're if you do not have a basket, I highly recommend you one of one of those or one of the similar brands. But you can see how big those wires are. This is the power that comes up here to run your live scope and run your other electronics up here. Dude, that is a that is a horse of a wire. I believe it's six gauge, all the way from the battery, all the way up here, and then you can run all of your accessories off of this right here. That's what I've got the live scope these two right there they're on that big connection right there and i will take and i'm going to totally insulate this before i stick it back into the hole permanently just so you guys know don't freak out that was another trend, uh, tip from from trent over there at sonar pro uh, but that is where we are currently i tested all the electronics all the electronics work we're good to go uh, so now the next step is to test go out and run the boat again i'm going to check my 360 check my live scope, uh, check all my graphs, and then I'm gonna test again my graph in the back and make sure all those transducers work like they should, the 2D on the Lowrance specifically. Uh, so I'm gonna put this thing back together and get it ready to go. Hopefully I can get another good day to go test everything and we're gonna see where we are. If anybody has any questions on, on what's gonna be next, I've still got to, like I said, tighten everything up, test, test all this out, I've still got to put the light on my power pole, that Russell Marine uh, power pole light, anchor light. It's very convenient and handy. All you got to do is hit your button. Uh, I've done an install video on that before. A couple other smaller things, but we're, we're, we're gaining on it. We're at least uh, we're at least at that halftime show. If it was a hockey game, we'd probably be like at the end of the second period for you hockey guys out there. But anyway, that's the, that's the Basscat Puma STS update for the 2023 season. Hopefully we can knock out a little bit more on it uh, and, and get it tested and see what this bad boy can do.